Hi, I'm Claudia Lash, and today I thought I would say a little something about machine stitching um, for applique. I love to use machine fusible applique and stitch it, and usually I use the blanket stitch, but I have decided to, that sometimes it's just great fun to add more decorative or fancy stitches. So there's a lot to think about when you're using fancy stitches on your machine. And I thought I would talk just a little bit about what the first things that I think about when I'm doing some uh, fancy stitching. So if I have a applique piece that I am going to definitely use heavier fancy stitching with, the first thing that I do is put some stabilizer on the back. Oh, here's an example of some of some fancy stitching. I forgot to show this. This is a just one of the um, types of quilts. This is called Rush Hour, and I used fancy stitching on the fish, and I used just regular blanket stitching on the bubbles. So there is a difference, and the fancy stitching is what we're going to concentrate on. So the first thing you need is some stabilizer on your block are on your on the back of whatever it is you're you're sewing on you can find all kinds of stabilizers i usually get a lightweight tear away because i want to tear it away i don't want it to be in there forever some of the stabilizer will wash away so um, that's fine too so i put that on the back and here's one i'm working on right now i just uh pin this around the edges so that when I stitch on it, um, there will be something for these stitches to, uh, to sink into rather than just the fabric. If you try to do stitching without a stabilizer underneath, your stitches will pull all up because of the thinness of the fabric. So. Use some sort of stabilizer. If nothing else, I have used paper before, but uh, the paper sometimes is more difficult to pull out when you're finished. So the first thing you need is um, the stabilizer. And then you need some thread. Because this thread is going to be what's showing, it's fun to choose um, some showy type of thread. So I have drawers full back here of thread. I've just pulled out some oranges and a few of the greens and um, I have yellow, I just have every color combination. Threads come in different weights. So for this type of stitching, I usually choose a heavier weight thread. For example, uh, most of the threads that we sew with are 50 weight. For this kind of stitching, I'm usually looking for something that's a 30 or a 40 weight. I even have some 12 weight thread here. You can use the, the 50 weight. It just is a little thinner, finer, so it takes a little denser of a stitch and a lot of times the threads a little thicker it's easier uh, to show off quickly now when you use a thread that's thicker you need to have a needle that the thread the hole is big enough and the, and the thread can fit through nicely so your machine is just happy 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 sewing with it when you're choosing your once you've chosen your thread and you're getting ready to sew, you have to make sure that your needle is the right kind of needle. If you have a thicker or a lower number thread, you have to have a higher number needle. Here is my handy little needle pin cushion. It's, I've used it for years and years. You might be able to tell that. And I have it marked off. This is my 8012 top stitch needle section. Looks like I need to get rid of some. This is my 9014 top stitch. Now, this one is probably the most common one that I use with these 30 and 40 weight 
threads. If you have a 30 or 40 weight, you need a 90 or 90-14 needle. If you have a 12 weight, you might even need a 116 top stitch. So make sure that you think about that when you're getting ready to sew and have something that will work with it. Here is where I keep my needles that I, I just happen to have this plastic case and I separate them. A universal needle is not going to be your best needle for this kind of job. That might be if you're mending something that has uh, some poly in it, like a t-shirt or something. But most of my needles are separated by their size so that I can go right here and find a jeans denim needle or a top stitch or whatever. Finally, if you are using a metallic thread that, um, that will really show up and be nice, but it needs a metallic needle. So make sure that you uh, consider that. For your bobbin thread, you need a very light thread. You don't want a thick thread in your bobbin. I like um, a bobbin, something called bobbin line, which is a very fine thread that won't show up when you're stitching. Then, um, I guess that's the main thing to think about. When we're thinking about the beginning of this, this has mainly been about threads. And so when you get your threads picked and you have your um, needle threaded, then the next thing we're going to talk about is setting up your machine to stitch.